Hey guys, Toddy here from RC Excitement. I uh, just wanted to kind of show you around the new environment that we're building right now. I uh, wanted to do a little soldering tutorial video as well too. Um, with that being said, uh, RC Excitement has expanded a little bit. RC Excitement now has about 2,000 extra feet of um, shop space. So the current shop is right there. Um, we're going to be going from 1,600 to 3,700 square feet. With that being said, I want to do a quick tutorial video on... Um, just being able to solder in general. Uh, I have a soldering block here, makes everything pretty much easier on when we're soldering stuff. Uh, today I'm gonna be soldering an EC5 to Traxxas adapter, something that's not actually out on the market. So a little bit easier to make and show you guys how we make it and how to make it look nice. Um, so obviously we have solder, soldering iron. We definitely use a soldering iron that has a big base to it. Uh, the big base allows us to be able to keep heat inside the iron. So pre-tin the iron tip just a little bit. I'm actually going to clean it off first. Make sure the iron is clean. From there, we're going to be just tinning. And then from here on the side piece. So I like to solder on the side. Have that melt down in. And then I kind of cover everything back up from here. So once that is completely tinned, you don't want anything showing on the gold plating. You want to make sure that it has full tinning to it. Reason is, is you kind of want the solder to, to pool up a bit. Um, the more stable of connection, you don't want any wire showing, so we're just going to make it so it's really nice and solid. Uh, from there, we're going to take our wire. I have some TQ13 gauge wire that I've really been enjoying using. TQ13, super nice strands to it. Uh, reason I'm going to use this for the video is just because it is a copper color, so you can really see how to not mess up on the soldering. So we're gonna make it equal length. From there, we have our two equal wires. We're gonna use our favorite tool, our little stripper. Gotta love those. And we're gonna strip this wire, I'd say about two to three millimeter. Um, from here, instead, after you strip the wire, I always twist it. And we're gonna do two at once just to speed up this process. Twist that and take this little connector out of this soldering jig. Soldering jig is made out of steel, makes it really, really easy. Uh, from here, what I do is I actually put the iron in the back and then I just touch the tip of it. And then all you're doing is you're feeding in solder from the front and it's melting all the way through the connector. So one of the big things is, is you wanna make sure that on that solder joint, you don't have any of the wires showing. You can see how on this side, there's obviously copper still showing but I don't want any of the copper showing. Uh, it is totally okay if you have a little bit too much solder. I'm gonna show you what happens when you do have too much solder, because it is totally okay. So if I add this, start from the back, feed into the front, and if I just feed in way too much solder onto this thing, way too much, because you have it kind of globs up, what I do, take it and bang it off just a little bit. I re-add just a touch to make sure everything's nice and full, and then we have a solder joint ready to go. From here, I'm gonna repeat that step one more time, just so we can get two wires. I know they're both black, but just for demonstration purpose, this is TQ13 gauge. I use this in race vehicles. Uh, TQ is a nice thin wire on 13. Very flexible, very easy for soldering. So once again, start from the back, feed it into the front, and then flip. Start from that back and feed into the front. So we're gonna get everything tinned first. That way it's kind of just like an assembly line. Uh, if I'm ever soldering a Traxxas to EC5, I have my Traxxas connector here. It's one of the Traxxas 4S. That way if we're doing any 8S vehicles or 6S vehicles, you can fit any type of battery in there. So Traxxas connector fits nice and tight in there. Uh, we have these connector pieces. And if you notice on there, it'll actually say wire side and then there's a little line on this. That line, you can't go beyond solder-wise. So you gotta be really careful because otherwise it won't click in. Uh, if you do have it where it goes beyond, don't worry too, too much because you can always just take a Dremel and remove some of that solder. So from here, I like to start on the very edge and you're just adding a little bit of solder right here. And honestly, that's enough for right now because as you put the connector on there wire-wise, the solder will kind of flow forward towards the edge of that. So I always like to do my Traxxas end uh, second because the clip on these ones goes on there. So I want to make sure that the clip 
doesn't interfere with the wire length. So we'll go through, through this and then we're also gonna do a five millimeter bullet. That way I can kind of show you guys how to finish solder. So from here, all we're gonna do, uh, normally you add a little bit of solder to the iron, but mine already had that on there. We're just gonna press that on. And as that connection melts, nice and good. What we're gonna do from here is if you ever notice, I kind of like that this didn't show perfectly. You can show how the wire still shows. What I like to do is completely can, uh, complete that joint by adding a little bit more solder. So if I can see this on the side, you can kind of see how it's not finished. And what I'm doing is a tapping method. So instead of holding this, the entire joint would normally completely melt. What I'm doing is I'm putting the solder where I want it and then just kind of melting it on the iron and it naturally flows onto that solder joint. So I'm not melting the joint behind it until I do this, where I can lay this down and then make that look nice. So as you can see on there, there's no solder that you can't have it. Um, it's not showing the wire itself. It's all completely hidden. That way it looks nice and it's really stable. So you can see I can pull on that. It's really nice and easy. So from here, one more time, a little bit of solder on that iron. And we'll remember that this is the positive side because these are both black wires. So we'll always make sure that we recheck our orientation. So that one actually came up pretty good. Once again, we'll let that cool for just a second and then we'll use that tapping method. Clean off the iron one more time, add a little bit more solder, just nice and clean solder. And then just tap, 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 a roo. Onto that top, nice. From here, just kind of recheck that your wire length is the same. Make sure that you're not uneven solder wise, that looks perfect. Um, clip goes on. I like to just use some pliers Pliers allow it to squish on both sides, and then that clip's nice and tight on there. Uh, from here, we're just gonna check orientation before we solder it. So obviously you have positive on one side and then negative as indicated on the side of the connector. Always check that, you don't want any battery smoke. Once that smoke comes out, it ain't going back in. So from here, we'll do the Traxxas end. One more time, clean the tip, just the tip. And then we'll put a little dab of solder on there. And then we have our positive side that we'll start with. So positive side, solder down. And you're just adding a little bit of heat to it. And naturally that joint will melt. And then once it's all flowed together, then you can let go. So you can see how the solder joint held nice and tight. There's no wire marks, no wire strands showing. You can obviously tell that because there's no copper. And then once again, same thing on this side. And then we'll move on to the bull connector. The bull connector is kind of one of those things where you can really see how to solder perfectly. I say as I nick the connector. And there's that. So neither of the joints went beyond that line. We'll get nice and close up shot wise. Whoa! Always pull out, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. So there we go. We have it where the solder joints didn't go beyond those two lines. Uh, from here, I normally just take a um, screwdriver, or you can just push them in with your fingers as long as you push from the base. So those click in nice and tight, and then we have a perfect connector to be able to adapt a IC5 vehicle or like a spectrum adapter to a Traxxas. Uh, from there, we're going to move on to a 5 mil bullet. This is really where you get to show off your shine and shimmer, because on race vehicles, you want them to look nice. If you can't go fast on the track, might as well look good in the pits. So from here, all we're going to do is add solder to the base inside because that's where the connection really makes the biggest point of contact patch. Uh, from here, I like to just fill the connector on the top. Uh, some people just solder on the inside. I want it to look nice all the way on top. But in the same sense, too, I don't want to get any solder on the outside of that bullet. See how it's still all gold on the outside, so nothing on the sides. From here, I'm gonna take a little bit of TQ13. One more time as well too. We'll take it and we'll strip the end. I like to strip a little bit more if I'm doing bullet connectors, maybe like three or four millimeters instead of that two to three. Just gives it because the bullet has a longer contact patch on the bottom, it makes that entire wire stick in there. So once again, from the back, you'll add solder to the front. 
That entire thing will fill with solder. You can see how it's nice and clean, nice and shiny. From here, just reorientate your bullet. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try and do this not perfect the first time and then show you how to finish solder these. So you can see how it's a little bit more stranded. What I mean by that is this position here, you can see some of the wire still showing. So what I like to do, just to make it look even better, is that same tapping method. Where you're just tapping solder on top. And you kind of go around to the positions that you need. Always want to change positions. From here, tap that all the way around. And what I'm doing is I'm not adding too much heat to the connector itself to melt it all, because then the connector would just fall apart. Uh, solder flings everywhere, and then you gotta start all over again. So once I have all that solder extra there, then I kind of just give it one last finishing solder touch. And then, look at how nice that looks. So beautiful. All right, fellas, if you guys have any questions, uh, just go ahead and post in the comments. Uh, otherwise, stop down here at RC Excitement. We can do a tutorial video here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy.